Welcome to our lecture online. Now, quasars were very mysterious objects for many years. From the moment they were discovered, at least from a perspective of the radio signals that we began to realize, that we began to see from these quasars, and then slowly over time began to realize that these were coming from galaxies really far away, the next surprise happened to come along. Well, we began to spend more time very carefully measuring the radio signals coming from these quasars and then also beginning to see that they were also putting out signals in all the other various uh, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, all the way from the far infrared all the way into visible light, UV and X-ray radiation coming from them in vast quantities at high intensities, much higher than we get from our own galaxy. And then we began to see that those intensities were fluctuating. And those were fluctuating over periods of months, weeks, and even days. Now here, we need to carefully take a look at that to understand what that really means. So here we're thinking that the light, that the energy from that quasar is coming from the entire galaxy. Very, very active galaxy. So that's where the term active galaxy is coming from. Here's the galaxy that's putting out as much light as a thousand Milky Way galaxies. Why does it do that? Where does that come from? What's the mechanism? We had no idea yet at the time. But then let's say that here's the curve, the light curve, or the energy curve, because it's over all the various forms of radiation. The energy curve, the intensity of the radiation, over a period of time, we could see that it could change as much as 50% in a single week. It could become more intense and it become weaker in as much as a single week, by as much as half. So how can a galaxy change its intensity by as much as 50% in just a single week. And to give you an idea why that is so incredible to imagine, let's think about this. So here we go and take a look at our neighbor, the Andromeda galaxy, and there's a small picture of it. And here's our own Milky Way galaxy. So here we are on the Earth, and we're observing the Andromeda galaxy. It's beautiful, it's about two and a half million light years away from us. But what would happen if for some magical reason we could make the Andromeda galaxy disappear instantly. So, boom, and it's gone. What would we see? Well, for the first two and a half million years, nothing. It would still be exactly the same. The Andromeda galaxy would still be there, and we'd be taking pictures of it for the next two and a half million years because the light that had left Andromeda galaxy before it made it disappear, it's still on its way and it will take two and a half million years to reach us. So for two and a half million years, we would have no idea that the Andromeda galaxy is now gone. Then what we see after two and a half million years? Well, it turns out we would barely see any difference. Because notice that the Andromeda galaxy is about 100,000 light years across. That means that the light from the back of the galaxy takes 100,000 years longer to reach us than the light from the closest side of the galaxy. So what would happen is when the galaxy was instantly disappearing, we'd still see all the light coming to us, and slowly the very front of the galaxy would begin to disappear. And after a thousand years, a small sliver of the galaxy would no longer be visible. And then imagine there would be a, a hundred of these 1,000 year slices. So every 1,000 years, we'd see a little bit less of the galaxy, a little bit less of the galaxy. It would take thousands of years before we begin to see a significant bite out of the galaxy. Thousands of years, not a week, not a month, not days. So here we see enormous fluctuations that could not be produced by simply making half of the galaxy disappear because we wouldn't see any changes, for in this case, for billions of years. So what is changing? What is causing these enormous energy fluctuations from an object as big as a galaxy? Well, it turns out that if we can lose half the intensity in a single week, that means that the size of where that energy is coming from cannot be any bigger than a light week. Not a light year, but a light week. The distance that light travels in a week. So we're beginning to realize that the object from which this enormous amount of energy is coming from must be basically the size of a solar system. So imagine that there's a region somewhere in the center of the galaxy that is no bigger than our solar system, perhaps out to the Oort cloud, that is producing as much energy as a thousand Milky Way galaxy, all concentrated within a very small region somewhere inside the galaxy, presumably at the center. 
What is it at the very center that's producing as much energy as a thousand Milky Way galaxies? Well, stay tuned for the next video and we'll give you an idea of what that might be. I don't understand the thing about the weak, how that relates to that. Okay, so what does this curve represent? What is the changes? So notice that the intensity of a quasar, so let's say we have a quasar here, and the quasar is, is sending out enormous amount of radiation, and we can see that radiation, but the strength of the radiation, the intensity of the radiation, is changing very rapidly. It's getting brighter and dimmer and brighter and dimmer, as much as 50% change in the intensity over a shorter period of a week. So like, it's like a flickering candle that gets brighter and dimmer over a period of a week. When you realize that if you make an entire galaxy disappear, you wouldn't see any changes for many, many years hundreds of years, thousands of years, before you begin to see a small percentage of the light disappearing, even if it disappeared instantly. So they had to, that's all the only thing they would assume or conclude that it's the quasar that's doing it, not the galaxy. So it's, it's, it's what, so now what is the quasar? Well, it turns out the quasar is something inside the galaxy, very, very small, that produces enormous amount of energy. So it's not the galaxy itself, because it, the galaxy can't do that. It's got to be something really small, as small as a light week, the time that it takes light to travel in a single week, something very, very tiny. So what's doing it? Well, we need another video to explain that one. Goodness. <laughs>